Hello everybody, uh, my name is Greg Nolan, I'm an architect and I work with the Centre for Sustainable Architecture with Wood at the University of Tasmania. My colleague here... Yeah, Michael Lee. Um, my background is from the timber industry, I'm now working here with Greg at the University of Tasmania. Alright, well today what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the moisture content of timber and the ways that we can measure it. Mick, um, what standard covers measuring moisture in timber? Yeah. The Australian Standard 1080 Part 1, which is currently under review, is the standard. So Mick, under the standard, um, what are the ways that we can measure um, the moisture content of timber? Yeah, there's two basic ways, Greg. One is the oven dried method, which we'll discuss later, and the other is moisture meters, resistance or capacitance. The resistance or capacitance meters are an indicator, the oven dried is a definitive test. We're going to deal with the oven dried method of um, measuring moisture in detail in our second of our podcasts. In this one, we're going to look at moisture meters. And there's two major types a resistance moisture meter and a capacitance moisture meter. Moisture meters don't measure moisture, the amount of water that's in the timber. They measure some indicator of moisture in the timber, which is quite different when you want to think about it. So this one measures the electrical resistance in the timber and the electrical resistance gives us an indication of the amount of water in the wood. This one measures the electrical capacitance of the, the timber and that also then gives us an indication of the amount of water in the wood. Now, when we use either of these two tools, we've got to keep remembering that we're only measuring an indicator. Now there's certain things that will vary how that indicator performs. If we look at resistance moisture meters, the things that make the electrical resistance of the wood change besides moisture, the amount of moisture in the wood, is the species of the timber and the temperature of the wood. And so when we use this one, we've got to allow that what we're reading is going to be adjusted off with this one, the, um, the capacitance meter, it's highly sensitive to variations in density in the wood as well as the depth of the timber and occasionally what might be under the timber as well. All right, first of all we're going to use the resistance moisture meter. Now the resistance moisture meter has two prongs on the end. Um, these prongs are insulated which means you've got a sharp point at the end and you've got some rubber or plastic insulated coated section at the bottom. Bottom. That means as it's measuring the resistance as far as this bit goes in. If we put it just into the surface, then it's measuring it at the surface. If we drive it right in, then it will measure the depth down that we drive the pins into. And the insulated bit then stops it reading the moisture further out. When we want to read the resistance, it's also important to get the pins in the right orientation to the grain of the wood. This moisture meter and most resistance moisture meters read along the grain of the timber, not across. They certainly don't read the end grain of the timber. They're meant to go into the surface along the grain of the wood. So what we'll do now is we'll just take this, we'll put it in, bash it into the wood and then we can take a reading and here this one reads 10%. Now because this is radiata pine we have to make an adjustment to that reading to account for the species and we also have to account for the temperature and if I want to take the moisture content of hardwood instead of softwood it's exactly the same procedure. I align the pins along the grain Drive them in, take a reading, and here it says that's nine and a half. We've taken one moisture meter reading here, um, but one isn't enough to give us a decent indication of what the moisture content of a pack of wood is. Now that's for a number of reasons, is that wood's quite variable, it varies in density, um, 
it also varies in its actual grain structure from board to board or from one part of the board to another part of the board. Given all that, we need to take a number of readings across any pack to give us a reasonable indication of the moisture content of the pack itself. Generally, you're looking at at least five or up to 10 readings across a pack to give us a reasonable indication that the pack is in the moisture content range that we want. This is our capacitance moisture meter and it's quite different to our resistance moisture meter, especially in how we use it. First of all, we don't have to drive any pins into the timber, so we're not going to damage the piece at all. So all we need to do is we need to turn it on and then we place the meter on the piece of wood and that gives us a reading. Now that's also saying 10 here and it will say something like 12 there. So what the, this meter is giving us is giving us a reasonable indication of an approximate moisture content of the piece in a way that's very quick and doesn't damage the piece at all. So with a capacitance meter, I'm just going to place it on the wood and then I can read the reading. And from there, I'm getting 10%. However, if I move it along to this knot, I get a different reading. It'll be about 12. What about maintenance, Mick? Is there any other maintenance issues that we've got to look, up, look after? Batteries on both, obvious condition of cases and leads, and of course, pins on the resistance. They're very simple, very, very simple. You can get them calibrated, recalibrated to Douglas fir. The, the standard is in, in the uh, Australian standard 1080, and that can be done by most reliable uh, technical firms. So Mick, what, what should I make sure I don't do with a resistance moisture meter? All right. First, always check your batteries. Make sure the, the, uh, the meter's working correctly. Secondly, never take it across the drain in any direction. Never take it on the end and try not to use uninsulated pins because the surface moisture will affect the reading greatly. You can also take it at several depths to see how the gradient is through the timber. The suggested is 30 and 50%. So if you take a reading at 30, then 50% it should give you a reasonable gradient through the board. That's 30 or 50% of the depth? Depth of the board, yes. Okay. Um, I've had people tell me that their moisture meter has been calibrated for this particular timber. Should I believe them? No. N n all, all meters are originally calibrated on Douglas fir and it is safer to actually use the, the figures that have been put out by either ourselves at Seesaw or CSIRO. So, what about the capacitance moisture meter? What should I do with that? Capacitance moisture meters, as Greg said before, are great for a quick fix. They're non-damaging. Just beware though, when the material gets thinner, you do have the risk of reading whatever's underneath it, and that, that's the greatest downfall. They're great, if, as he said, if you're using it on a, on a range of products that are similar. The resistance and the capacitance moisture meters give you a good indication of the moisture content of the timber, but they're not good enough if you're going to base production on them, um, or if you've got to defend uh, a claim about what the actual moisture content of the wood is. The only way you can determine the actual moisture content of the wood is to do an oven dry. And we'll, descri we'll describe that in the second of our podcasts.